I have a degree in rangeland resources from Oregon State University. I've worked for the Nature Conservancy and Environmental Organization. I've worked for the BLM. So I've seen natural resource management from all angles. And now I'm a rancher. We're not managing our natural resources anymore. It's being dictated by courtrooms, bureaucrats in Washington, environmental groups who use the Equal Access to Justice Act to sue every time something good is trying to be done on the land. The Equal Access to Justice Act started out with all good intentions. It was designed so that poor people could sue the government and could be compensated for any lawyer's fees. Most of these environmental groups now use that act and they make money on suing the government when it comes to natural resources and the Endangered Species Act. All they have to do is win on one particular point in a case. And usually they win on procedure. If the BLM doesn't dot their I's and cross their T's right, they'll take them to court and they'll win. And so a lot of times the BLM's hands are tied. So what they do is they don't do anything for fear of litigation. I was the director of BLM, the Bureau of Land Management, from 1997 through 1999. I was sued every day by some environmental group for some policy that was being implemented under the BLM authority. The environmental groups do have lawyers who uh, are looking for legal precedent, not good agricultural or ranching practices. But on the other hand, I can take you to many, many sections of the West where grazing has destroyed uh, high desert uh, sagebrush uh, ecosystems because the cattle are just left, they're not moved. Get it out of your mind that this is good guys versus bad guys. Ranchers are good people. The problem is they got used to a, a certain way that things were set up, where the BLM served them, there were very few competing uses. All of a sudden, another 50 million people showed up and said, but that's our land too, and, and we want a piece of the action. You can understand their frustration. They don't like the BLM because it's enforcing a law that they don't agree with. So if there's a problem with, say, an endangered species, the BLM can't say, well, who cares about that turtle or, or that bird? We'll just kill it and, and increase grazing. They can't do that. They would immediately be sued. Again, like the Equal Access to Justice Act, the Endangered Species Act, it was wonderful. It was a wonderful law. Nobody wants to see species just wiped off the face of the earth. But it has been hijacked. A good example of this is the spotted owl. They sued to get the spotted owl listed. Look what it's done to the logging industry. And they're using it right now with the sage grouse. The BLM has come up with this resource management plan that affects all western states and it is atrocious. This sage grouse RMP resource management plan amendment, if it doesn't get stopped, will be the end or near end of ranching in Harney County. The environmentalists are saying that we need all this sagebrush, all this cover, that our cows need to be taken off of it, when in fact they are enhanced by what we do with our cattle and by the farming and ranching industry. There's a misconception. In the 1940s, their population was at its peak and there was at least double the amount of cattle in Harney County. If the livestock industry was so devastating to sage grouse, why, when livestock use was at its peak, so was sage grouse? There are studies proving that livestock and sage grouse are compatible. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service has said the major causes of the reduction in sage grouse population is number one, catastrophic fire. Number two, invasive weed species. The number three cause, the encroachment of junipers, which is a tree that has taken over Oregon and other parts of the West. And when you remove cattle, you increase all three of those things that are causing the decline in the sage grouse.
sage grouse only use sagebrush for part of the year. Then they have to eat, they have to rear their young. And they do that behind our cows with new shoots of grass, the succulent stuff that our cows graze off and it comes back up, or in the alfalfa fields because it has such high protein. That just goes to show you that these environmental groups are not interested in these species. They're interested in getting people off the land, getting the loggers off the land, the miners off the land, the, the cattle ranchers off the land. A lot of it has to do with control. They want it to be what they think is pristine. People forget that we are producing food to feed you, and the food consumers need to stand behind us. I don't want to know what this nation would look like if these regulations keep going and you keep squeezing these family farms and ranches out of existence. Already, we found out about at least two people that we know of who have had their cattle numbers reduced because of the sage grouse RMPA. So the reality of it is, next year, we might not be in business, we might not be here. We need to be flourishing, we need to be thriving, we, need, we don't need to be restricted in the nothingness. It's just insane. Our community needs to thrive, and we need to use our natural resources to do that. America is not going to be able to sustain itself if we keep going down this road. Nature needs man to succeed. When we set foot in this great country, we made an impact. We have to be stewards of it. We can't just walk away. We can't just let it go back to nature, nature because it won't. Do you think that my cows are doing more to destroy the environment or are your cities? Is concrete more damaging than my cows?